we're going to get started with a basically a review question on these motion graphs. You should have seen these before in a previous physics course, but in physics we kind of stress being able to visualize and think about variables in a problem with different kinds of visualization. Doing it through equations and formula is one way, uh, making a sketch is another way, and then also there's this kind of graphical representation. So if you remember from previous physics courses, when we were trying to relate these things called velocity versus time graph to position versus time graph, and also acceleration versus time graph, these three graphs are very related, right? To go from one to the next, you know that the velocity is delta x over delta t, or now that we're dealing with calculus, you know it's dx dt, the derivative, or specifically is the slope. Similarly, your acceleration is the derivative or the slope of your velocity as well. So going down this way, you're using your slope. Going back up, the reverse of your slope or derivative will be your integral, which is your area under the curve. So in this question, we're going to practice both of these because we're starting from the middle one and to go back up, we have to think about the area under the curve, whereas to go down to the acceleration graph that I've added in to the question here, we have to take the slope. So let's start with the position versus time graph first. And the thing with the position versus time graph is, all we know is something about a slope, and therefore we know something about the changes of the position, which is your displacement. What we're missing is actually the initial position because the velocity versus time graph doesn't tell us where we start, it just tells us how fast we're going at any given point. So in the absence, we kind of have to assume what the initial thing is. It doesn't have to be x equals zero. I'm going to randomly choose x zero to be down here to be somewhat negative. And we'll make a note down here that we assume that we weren't given that. And then off we go. And of course, we know that the position versus time graph, the slope of it is represented on the velocity versus time graph. What we can kind of cut up here is we can cut up this thing into a few pieces. First of all, we'll notice that over here, what we have here is we have a constant and positive slope. That's plus BE, my shorthand for positive. So for that first little part, all we know is we have some positive slope. I don't really know when it crosses zero. I have known none of those numbers, but again, it's a sketch. So it kind of goes up positive and constant, meaning it's going to be a straight line. For the next little part, up to here, my slope is still positive. Don't think that because velocity has started going down that I'm immediately turning around. What it's actually telling me is at all these points, my velocity is still positive. It's just getting more and more towards zero. Zero, of course, is going to be where my slope is horizontal so that it smoothly transition is still positive positive less positive less positive until it gets to zero and as soon as it hits zero that's when it begins to be a negative slope that's the turnaround point when you have zero velocity changing from positive velocity going up to negative velocity going down so that's the third bit and then it gets more and more negative as time goes on right not so negative more negative then the very last stretch again we have again we have constant but negative so again it's going to basically be a straight line again now you notice i've drawn the ending point pretty similar to the starting point just because when i look at the area under the curve here this area which is your delta x up this way right and this area which we can say delta x2 coming all the way back down, they're very similar, right? You can see that delta x1 is about the same as delta x2. So therefore, I go up a certain amount and then I go back down the same amount, roughly speaking. Again, it's a sketch. Next, we'll quickly finish our acceleration versus time graph. 
putting the axis up here because I have roughly some idea where things are. But in any case, we're going to kind of cut up the graph into this very similar kind of slices, right? So we can see, first of all, that in this first section, what is my slope? Well, my slope is zero, right? That's representing zero acceleration, right? There's no slope here, no slope here, no slope here, no slope there. So zero acceleration, zero, 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 zero acceleration all the way throughout. As soon as it starts getting here, it becomes negative. But you notice that this section is fairly straight. So pretty quickly, it becomes a constant negative slope. Constant being the same slope everywhere around here. It transitioned quite quickly, but smoothly, because it's still around the corner. And then until it gets up to here, where it goes back down to zero slope again. And there you go. Quick sketches, just to get a rough qualitative idea. Uh, if we were given any specific numbers, of course, um, it would be nice to kind of label certain points, say how high this is, any turnover points is nice. Uh, ultimately finding where all these zero crossings are, somewhat important and nice. And how high and what the, exactly the slope is, you know, those are things that we can find out if we're given the numbers to make an even better sketch.